Okay, so we're here at the Hunterdon County Fair today. My name's Tim Schuler. This is Kevin England, and this is Alice Casey. Kevin's going to do some filming. Alice is assisting me with uh, judging the entries, and we're doing this video today to try to give people an idea as to what we look for while we're judging, um, and hopefully we'll be able to use this as training for people that may want to become a judge of of beehive products, of honey and other things like that. So um, we're going to go and show you the materials that we bring and the equipment that you would need to do honey judging. And we are also going to go through the process of judging and what you would see and what you would look for. And um, then we're going to, at the end of this video, just answer some questions that people have had in the past or that maybe you even have now as you view it. So hopefully you'll get something out of it and enjoy it judging some extracted classes of honey as well as some beeswax. Um, so the first thing we're going to go over is some of the equipment that a person would need if they were going to be involved with honey judging. Most important is the rule sheet that you would get from the show chairman. We have the rules here that tell us what type of jars, what type of um, classes there are, how large the beeswax needs to be. We also have score sheets that break down all of the different elements that we'll be looking at um, in, uh, in the samples. So we have score sheets. The next important thing is a refractometer. This is an instrument that is used to um, measure how much moisture is in the honey. If honey is over 18.6% moisture, it's not really honey and it will be disqualified from the show. Likewise, if the honey is too thick, it's probably been artificially uh, reduced in moisture content and that way it could be disqualified as well. So a refractometer. The next thing we need or that we, I use in order to break the classes if they're close is a honey scale. What this is, is it has some laminated um, laminated color um, levels that allow me to know where to break the classes based on color. So I don't always need this because sometimes it's very obvious where to break the classes. Other times it is necessary when you get real close to the edge. The other thing I keep in my kit are toothpicks. Toothpicks are necessary for taking the sample for the refractometer and for taste testing um, the honey to make sure it tastes like honey and not like it's been burned or some sort of, uh, of other, other odor or flavor has been picked up. Um, I like an LED flashlight so that I can look closely at the lids and at, and at the outside of the jars to see if there's smudging or dirt on those jars. We need a little cup of a little cup. We need a little cup of water to wash the refractometer between each um, between each sample. And then we also have this this contraption which is called a polariscope and what this does is it allows it straightens light rays so it goes straight through the jar and we can see any crystallization beeswax or impurities in the jar so this is very important because a lot of this stuff you really can't see with the naked eye and then the last thing that I like to have with me is a scale because some of these classes, when it comes to blocks of beeswax, the wax has to weigh a, a correct amount or have a minimum amount that it weighs. So we would have the scale. Um, it's important to have a well-lighted area. You need the refractometer for lighting. It, at this particular show, there's a lot of glare that comes in from outside. So sometimes you may see me cover myself up with a black plastic garbage bag so I can better see and reduce the glare coming out of the polariscope. So those are the main things that a person would need. And one other thing would be a paper towel to dry the refractometer in between samples. So those are the main instruments that um, a honey judge would need 
as they um, get involved with judging hunting. So some of the things you have to be mindful of if you're a judge of a honey show, the people that are working with you and maybe assisting you, um, everybody has to handle these samples accordingly. Um, they should only be touched by the top and maybe one finger on the bottom. They should never be turned upside down. You should not allow passerbys access to the jars. Um, it's important because if we get a lot of fingerprints around the side, the judge will not be able to determine if the sample came like that or was added by, by the helpers that are helping him. So everybody needs to handle the jars very much like this. They would come over and be put on the table, gently kept upright, never flipped upside down or anything like that. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm looking for smudges on the outside of the jars, looking for lint. I'm looking for airspace between the cap and the top of the glass ring. There's some kind of little bubbles on the outside of that. Or I mean, on the inside, I'm not really sure what that is. Would look closer under the polariscope. Give them all three a once over. You see that there, Alice? Mm -hmm. All those little dots. It's not the glass, right? I don't think it's the glass, no. Okay. Now, I'm going to open one. It's nice to hear that ring. The cap is clean. Very important. It smells like honey. A common mistake people make is they, um, they wash and they use too much soap in their jars and the jars smell like soap instead of honey. One's over full, one's just right. Wow, that one's on tight. That one's pretty close, a little over, but not bad. So we're going to put one drop of honey on the on the uh, refractometer. And then I'm going to taste. That's good. 15, 16. Sixteen minus. Wait a minute. Minus point seven. Sixteen minus point seven is what? I'm sorry. 15, 16, I'm sorry, 17 minus 0.7. 17 minus 0.7? Yep. Equals 16.3. Okay. That's 20 points. Got that? I like to write the percent moisture on there. Um, this refractometer has a thermometer on the back. And as that ambient air temperature changes, we either add or subtract uh, points. So, yeah. Now, I will clean. Aroma, 10. Flavor, 10. Uniform fill, eight. 
That's going to be close. Free of suspended particulates, pollen, air bubbles. All right. The caps all look good. The uniformity of fill was not 100%. There is a little bit of foam. Not so much on that one. There's a piece of lint. See it right there? Mm -hmm. But really not bad whatsoever. A little bit of foam, a little bit of lint. Um, there's one piece of lint on one jar. Um, floating on top. There's a little bit of foam around the glass, um, but very, very little. This, this person did a fine job, so I've knocked two points off for foam and lint. They got full, the full amount of points for flavor, full amount of points for aroma, okay? Um, I gave them eight points for uniformity of fill because two of the jars were slightly overfilled and um, the outside of the jar looked really good, except for this one jar that's got these little like bubbles. And I'm gonna make sure that it's not in the glass. And I'm gonna try to see if it's not in the glass or if it's just in the honey. Okay, I can't really tell, so I'm going to probe it with a toothpick and see if I can get it to move. If it doesn't move, it's in the jar. If it does move, it's in the honey. It does move. You see that? It's a little air bubble in the honey. Okay, air bubbles in the honey can be formed if the honey is too cold when it's, when it's bottled. And sometimes if that honey doesn't warm up, those larger air bubbles will not come out of the honey. Okay, so there is that in there. So I'm gonna nail that a little bit for appearance. He's judging the honey, and we're recording it. I just wanna say, don't touch those glasses. That's the most important thing. Because these haven't been judged yet, and if they get fingerprints off, they get marks off. But not to say that you would have, but people have reached for them. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't even No, it's okay, it's all right. They're asking pieces. So these are the honey These are from our bubbles. beekeepers, and they're submitted for honey judging. No. And he's the honey judge for the fair. And he's Knocking judging it off here. Yeah. Right now. And we're just Not bad. How he's no. There's only so. one at a time. Are you going to add these up then? Yeah, I will. He has a polariscope. When that's you're what done, that box is. And he sits yeah. in, and the light shines through, and he can see if there's any bubbles or particulate matter or color in there. Did you see all the little sparkles? Can you see them? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I see two, two dark dice. Yeah, there's a few more of them, and they are those little bubbles. Those They're those air bubbles. Okay, so that's the first entry is done. My assistant is going to add them up, and she is going to gently give me the next set. And you may notice, if you're watching this video, that these jars are numbered. They have a number on top. Those were assigned by... Ah. I won't look at that one. Those were assigned by the, the show chairman, okay? And that is so that the judge does not know who which entry belongs to who. So... Um, it's important that they're put on there so that we can record which sample is getting what score. So we're on sample entry number three, and that's what I'm going to look at now.
There's some slight smudges across the bottom of this, of this first jar we looked at. I can see airspace under the glass ring. I don't know if you and the camera can see that, but the, the jar should be full to the top of the glass ring. It's filled to the bottom. So that's a lack of uniformity. So this is a jar that we have, in, and you can notice there's an air space between, uh, the honey is only filled to the bottom of the glass ring. A correct fill would be to the top of the glass ring, so there is no air space between the cap and the honey. When a consumer sees that airspace, they, they think or feel that they have been shorted in the amount of honey they were supposed to get. In my opinion, it is better to slightly overfill the jars beyond the top of the glass ring rather than to short them by going under the glass ring. Dust, see it? Do you notice here there's little bits of dust under the cap? And that's a discounted situation. A little uh, bits of black dust in the cap. It's important when you're preparing an entry for show to make sure those caps are clean on the inside. That's the one that's underfilled. You can see that. Another thing I like to listen to is now this cap is very clean, no dust whatsoever. One cap bad, one cap good. This was the one you turned. Even so, the lid looks pretty darn good. One perfect, one under, one perfect. So the uniformity of fill is good. Could be a little better, but not bad. Seventeen point seven minus point six. So that should be seventeen point one. This is a little thinner, this honey. Oh. This has a very nice, light, floral flavor. When I judge honey, I don't judge but flavor is very subjective, so as long as it tastes like a natural honey that's not been adulterated or not been burned or not fermented, I give the, the, the entry full amount of points on flavor because flavor can be very subjective. Okay, we didn't do aroma, Alice. That's all right. Should you do the aroma as soon as you open it? Or? Yeah, that's why I put the lid yeah, back on. I just thinking about that. Like, why? See, I like to clean it, Alice, and then let it sit dry. open so it's dry for the next one. Okay. Now. No, one of them smelled a little smelled a little soapy. Yeah. Container appearance smudge on the one. 
I'm going to knock one off for that. Uniformity of fill, one, one, yeah, minus one for that. Aroma, we're going to check that again. 18 points for moisture. All right. You don't smell it? That's I'm good on that. He's doing a honey judging. Oh, really? Yeah, he's judging the honey for the fair. Nice. Does he know what he's doing with that? Absolutely. All right. <laughs> Tim, Tim Schuler, the state acres from oh, New Jersey, there we go. the New Jersey Department of Agriculture. Yes. yes, he does. I think there's no more pork rolls. Yep. <laughs> Plus, we have to look at look for lint and foam. This one has a little more foam than the last one. We also had dust under the lid. Cleanliness. I need to knock another one off. Dust. One lid. So that's going to be an eight. Okay. Now. No lint. A little more foam than the first entry. Look at how that, that comes up. A little more foam. No lint. That could be because of the airspace in there. No, it's because when they when they packed the honey, mm -hmm. it wasn't warm enough. Okay. Or they packed, they let it go into the jar too quickly. So what what puts foam on top of the jar is if the beekeeper um, lets cold honey run into the jar too quickly. So it's ideal that that honey would be warm to they say 90 degrees as it's packed and it needs to be put into the jar slowly rather than fast. And that will help to allevi alleviate um, foam. There are other ways that beekeepers can skim the foam off the edge of the jar using a toothpick or something like that. Um, but it's better to pack it warm and to let it go in slowly. So for foam, we have no lint, um, no wax floating, a little bit of foam. So we're gonna knock one off for that. All right, now we're gonna look in the refractometer. See how that smudge shines up? I don't know if, if you can see this on the camera. It's right where the letters are. It's right where, yeah, it's right where the letters are. You might see it. So right above my finger is a smudge or a smear across the jar. Uh, you can probably see that in the glare as I rotate it back and forth. It's important for beekeepers to completely wipe their, their jars when they're done. Do you see a hair in there? Mm -hmm. Oh my God. He's doing a honey judging. He's judging the honey for the, for the contest. Yeah, I'm not picking it up in here yet. So it's got a light but it's in there. Oh yeah, I see it now. Jeez, let me have that. You see it right there? Black hair. It's long. So right here is a long hair suspended in the honey. This whole side smudged. Put it, put it down and start from scratch, but not with the toothpick in your mouth. 
<laughs> Just looks a little hick quick. Right? Whole side, nice, or not, not a nice, but a big smudge. Yeah. Underfilled, see it? See the lighter the honey, big smudge along this side. The lighter the honey, the harder it is to hide defects. Do you see this? Honey on the outside of the jar. Well, see it right my there? finger, my index finger on my right hand is a whole bunch of sticky honey on the outside of the jar. That's a major um, fault. Wow. Nothing turns a judge off more than a sticky jar. Smudges all over the jar. And I don't know if you can see this, Alice. You see the little black dots? Yeah. Little bits of dirt. And right here there's smudges. Yep, more smudges. Above my index finger on the left side of the jar is a giant smear that almost goes from top to bottom. Appearance cleanliness. Yeah, that's like two. Okay. And here's why. Because of the honey. This is the major one. And the smudges. Okay. Uniformity of fill. Let's just check and see. That one's under. The other two are okay, but let's see what they look like. And while we do that, we're going to smell. It smells okay. Lid looks clear. It smells good has a nice honey fragrance. Not all of them have a honey fragrance, but what we're really looking for is that there's not a soap fragrance. Sometimes people are overzealous with using soap to wash their jars, and depending if they used an aromatic or fragranced dish soap, the whole jar will smell like soap, and it's very unappetizing. And you heard that click, that nice crisp. Yeah, we totally want to hear the, 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 the threads as we unscrew the lid. All right, now we're going to double check. We're a little over, mm -hmm. but not bad. That's under. This is under, under the glass ring. And that's pretty darn good. So I'd say two are pretty good, one under. Um, knocking one point off for underfill on one jar. Now you see that one's over. Mm -hmm. So we're going to knock two off. One for over and one for under. Okay. Oh man. Alice, you should taste that. Taste from this one. Kevin, you should taste that. Spin it though, Alice, so you don't drip. It almost tastes like it has an alfalfa flavor, like Western honey would taste. Yeah. You taste, isn't it? Oh, and even the aftertaste is good. The like aftertaste it. is good too. That that has an alfalfa flavor to me. Wow, that's good. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm. I just bought some raspberry honey from Seattle, and it had that same yeah blackberry raspberry or something. Mm. Seventeen point nine. Okay. And and not every refractometer has a thermometer on the bottom. 
but this one does. And as the ambient air temperature changes, we can either add or subtract depending on what the thermometer shows us. So we are going to subtract 0.6. So 17.3. So 17.3 is an 18 point entry. Okay. Now I've got to clean this so it has time to dry before the next sample. So we'll hold here for a second. Cleaning the refractometer, we just use water. Honey is, is a very, uh, uh, can be cleaned very nicely with water. Um, so just a little bit of water, a paper towel, and then clean off the surplus honey and dry it is a great way to have your refractometer ready for the next entry while we finish judging this entry. Okay, so flavor is excellent. 10, aroma was good as well, so they get 10 points for that. Um, the outside of the jars were, were not that clean, um, so I knocked them down to two points for that. All right, now we're gonna look for foam. See a little lint in the middle there? Mm -hmm. Not much foam though. See, the drier the honey, the lower the moisture content, the more likely air bubbles are to get into it, especially if it's not warmed. This honey was a little bit higher in moisture than some of the other entries. Now there's something floating in the middle, a piece of wax or something. Okay, so a little bit of wax. There's something floating up there, see it? A little boar lint. Not too much foam. Yeah, a little bit of lint, a little wax. Um, the foam's not too bad. Um, let me just put it in a light box, make sure we don't have any hair or anything like that in there. They do have dots. There are some dots, which are dirt. That'll be under suspended particles. Floating on top, though, uh, I think we'll knock off um, uh, 73. Okay. There's definitely little dots of dirt that are in the honey. Yeah, this jar it looks like it's on the verge of crystallizing. If it was put into a um, 55 degree temperature, it would probably solidify very quickly. This jar would have been better entered if it had been warmed up to say 95 degrees to make sure all the crystals dissolved before it was entered. Okay, so this is pretty cloudy. I did see black spots. Now, comparison. If I just hold these two up, you can see how you can see through this one, but you can't see through this one. Do you see that? I don't know if you guys can see this, but this is very clear. This is very cloudy. That's pretty. Yeah, that's a big air, I think it, yeah, that's one of the little bits of dirt. Boy, they got, how, whoever, those smudges. Yeah, whoever cleaned those jars did it well. 
matter of fact, I think we need to ask them, make a note. Let's ask sample number two how they clean the outside of their jars. Yeah, I'll pull for it right here. Probably Windex. It might be. Yeah. Okay. Outside looks nice. Do you smell honey? Yeah. I do too. Yeah. I don't smell smell. Uh, so. No, me neither. Pretty. Nice, Phil. Mm -hmm. Perfect, Phil. Caps are clean. The fill level is perfect. Aroma. A lot of foam though. Most foam so far on top. If you look in here, you should be able to see this very distinguished white ring of foam around the inside of the, of the jar, floating on top of the honey. Moisture. Mm. Another nice flavor. Eighteen point two minus zero point six. Seventeen point six. Uniformity is good. Flavor is good. All right. Lots of foam. Okay, let me clean this, Alice. It's pretty color though. It's beautiful. Glasses. I think you're gonna we're gonna be surprised when we put it in the re, in the uh, polariscope. I'll see right through the other side. I think it's gonna look good. Yep. I assume. Now this would be a good one to film with him so we can see a good one. Yes. Okay. Okay, so the first year, the first year I got my bees, he was down. I'll tighten them up. So I called Kevin, and he comes over, and I'll make my full bees. Probably don't even have to use it. Nah, we still need it. But you're going to like this. There's just some big crystals, but not much. Oh, yeah, that's pretty. It's not, it's not bad at all. But, you know, the, down by the bottom, it's clearer than the top. Yep. Sometimes those crystals could float up a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. But warming it would really help. Mm -hmm. You know what, Tim, I think this year, it's not going really hot day. That's true. And I think that's a lot of the issue. That's true.
<laughs> Compared to that last one, we couldn't even see through. It's huge. That's an 18. I think he got more than one. She's got a yellow dot. Oh, good for you. Lint. Yeah, I think Kevin's going to do it. No. We've got some lint on the outside of this jar. That's a great jar. beautiful day. More lint. A lot of lint on this entry. Nice to meet you, but. Lint. Lint, but no Yeah, no smudges. Okay, top of the ring, no airspace, no airspace, all that's good. Good honey smell, mm. clean lid, way overfilled. Yep. Uniformly overfilled. At least they were uniform. You know this one is light amber. Or is it amber? We're in, we had a light class and a light amber class. Okay, okay. You should try that one too. Eighteen. Ooh. That one's nice. Minus point seven. Eighteen minus point seven. So here we went from 0.6 to 0.7. I checked the thermometer on every entry because as the day warms up, um, sometimes it can change. Okay? 17.3. 17.3, which is 18 points for the sample. I don't know how judges do these shows with... Um, Eddie yeah, or was there 24 entries? There was one, one class with 24 entries. <sighs> We were at the Minnesota State Fair. They had an entry with like a class with like 80 entries in it. And they only do one jar because it would take too long to do them all. But they at least have to look for it. Yeah. Okay. So we're good on moisture. Aroma is good. Flavor is good. Okay. All right, let's take a look at the tops. It's very small, mm -hmm. little bit of foam, but not bad, not compared to that last one. Yeah. Little bit of foam. Little more foam on the one edge. Mm -hmm. No lint, really. So we just got foam. Look at how cloudy that is. That's more yeah. like two ago. Yeah. And there's little bits of dots. You see the black dots? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Right yeah. Suspended dirt. And this is your own glass right here, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. my own glass there. Yep. Suspended dirt. Can I add these 
is up at the end. This one's too. this one's clean and yeah. clear. Looks like the same cleaner. Mm, nice. I would agree. I don't see any smudges yeah. and I don't see any lint. Yeah. There's imperfections in the jar. You see there's like it looks like something raked down the side of the glass when it was still being yeah, being made. A lot of these glasses are hard to get there. Oh, they're terrible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nice. How's the fill? The fill looks good, but we'll have to open them up. Appearance. They might not want to tell me how they clean the jar because then I'll tell people how to clean the jar so it looks good. This sample, the reason I sniff every one is because I can smell soap. This one, we can smell the soap in it. And it's really a, a sad because it really looked nice on the outside. Aroma. Beautiful. Beautiful. Or they doss in the glass. Uh, uh, there was a little wax on the thread. So the fill lines pretty good. They look pretty darn good. I'd say they're right on. What do you think? Yep, right on. I think it's good to give good comments like that too. My problem is my handwriting stinks. Try that one, Alice. That got a tool of poplar in it. Got a little tool of poplar in it. Not a lot. It makes it a little bit darker, too. Yeah, not a lot, but it got a little bit. Ooh. Ooh. Isn't that good? Very good. 17.1 minus 7. Minus 7 point. 17.1. Minus, Minus 0.7. 0.7. 16.4. That's the best one so far. Right? Yeah. That's a good moisture. Flavor is delicious. Flavor, man. I could eat some of that honey. Yeah. Flavor. It's first class. Delicious. Um, all right. Let's look at the top. Flashlight. Little bit, but not bad. Not bad. Probably, Probably one of the best, best ones. Yep. You know. And they're what we call. It's actually not right. The one next to it is I don't think so. That's just foam. But let's grab grab me a stick. Just touch that with the stick. You remember now. You remember that this is the one we took our sample out of and tasted. Sometimes it makes a swirl. Okay. I can't find nothing wrong with that. Just, I mean, I'm going to go like this. That's the best phone we've seen so far. 
Okay. Yeah, I think this is a nice entry. I believe that this honey and that other honey is by the same person. But is it the same entry? I don't think so. It's two different colors. But I'll bet you it's the same person. Because the glass is so clean. And there's some. It looks clearer on your... Oh, lift that up. Can you see? No dirt. It's just crystal. It's large, like large size crystal. So again, could be the weather. And that, I think, is in the glass. Do you see that yeah. that divot there? Yeah. So, yeah. It's a shame the weather is really... That's what this frame looks like at the top. They don't go above that. The queen does not go above that. She lays all her... Okay. So, so if you looked at this... Okay, so we're judging beeswax now. In beeswax, we're looking for color, we're looking for aroma, we're looking for how clean the wax is. Okay, this is a one pound or slightly more class, which is class 13. What I'm going to do is um, actually weigh it. So it's one pound, um, point three. One pound, three point three ounces, so it's slightly more than a pound. So it fits that criteria. Okay, so now I'm looking at cleanliness. I want to look for dirt that is in the wax. You can see here's a speck of dirt. We also want to look for hair or lint that could be in the wax. Some people strain their wax through um, cheesecloth or move, wrap the wax in a lint-filled cloth and that lint will stick to the wax. So there's a little bit of lint on this wax, there's a little bit of dirt in this wax, but not a tremendous amount. Okay, so we're gonna knock off, let's say, five points for dirt and lint. The color is not a bad beeswax color, but ideal color would be straw yellow. So this does not meet my ideal standard of color, so I'm going to knock a few points off for that. Um, I'm going to knock that down to 13. Okay, straw. Okay, aroma. I don't really get a great beeswax aroma from this. I can smell the wax melter a little bit in the, in the aroma. Um, but it's not the, the ideal aroma, so I'm going to knock a couple points off for that. Um, absence of cracks and shrinkage. We have some damage around the BEES. We have some uh, air pockets, but not many. And here, do you see this mottled look, Alice? Yes. That's shrinkage. That ripple. That ripple. If, if this would have been put into a mold and allowed to cool slower rather than faster, you will see less shrinkage cracks and less of that rollingness on the back side. So it, did, it cooled a little bit too quick. So absence of cracks, there's not really any cracks other than the bees um, and shrinkage. So I would, I'm gonna knock um, five off for that. So that'll be 10. Um, uniformity of appearance. You know, it's difficult to mold up something that has this, it'd be better if it had a smooth side because we have these little air bubbles and divots. It's part of the six-sided cell. 
And people handle it. People handle it can cause a problem too. Um, but uniformity of appearance is not that bad. Um, I'll go with 18 on that. Okay, so you can add that up. Okay, so we're, uh, I'm gonna just talk to you briefly about one thing in my kit is this Jack's uh, Honey Color Grader. You can easily buy this from any bee supply company. They're like 30 or 40 bucks. And what it has is a multitude of these um, color guides that will help you break your classes and decide what which entry goes into which class. So the way it works is one of the one of the laminated sheets gives us the different um, millimeters of light that will go through the various different types of honeys. Okay, most classes in New Jersey would have dark. Um, amber, light amber, and light. Most of them have four classes based on color. So I use this scale to determine which um, entry goes in what class. So generally what I do is I will take them out and I will match them up to the jar. So this one's right around in the 70 mm range. Okay, if you look up here, this one is probably in the 55 to 60 range. If you look at the far side, we're right in the 30 mm range. And then down here is a dark, it's probably in the 130 mm range. Okay, so that would be how this would be used, um, quick and dirty, to break your entries into their respective classes. So Tim, we're going to talk about a couple things from a judging standpoint that people are going to want to know the answers to, having done a couple videos like this in the past. The first one I'll start with I think is probably the hardest one. It seems very critical and people don't like to be judged. Can you talk about why it's so stringent and, and hard and why you get to the detail you do about the products? Well, one of the things that this, that this type of, uh, of event does, Kevin, is it helps uh, the, check the beekeeper's skills as to um, the quality of their, of their product that they're packing and selling, and can they repeat that? That's why we have three, ent or three uh, individual jars in each entry, okay? Because we're looking for uniformity, we're looking for repeatability. Honey is a natural product. It's a product that most of the general public thinks is high quality. And um, this is just a great way to test the beekeeper's skill in producing a high quality pack consistently, time after time after time. And it doesn't matter if it's a cosmetic, if it's a piece of beeswax, a one pound block, or is it three, three, um, three jars of extracted honey. The test is being able to pr pr produce a high quality product consistently over time. And that helps to keep the strong reputation that honey has with the American consumer, yeah. and actually the worldwide consumer. And, and it's one of those things that I think people would be surprised how much Colgate or any of those companies, their product, their packaging, the quality and everything is there, so there's no reason why we shouldn't be. Still, people are going to look at it from a critical standpoint of the various things that you judge. One of the things that I noticed from judging is Sometimes the entries are so close that you have to be nitpicky in order to make it. And, and Kevin, that's true. The, 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 the show we did today, there was not a lot of entries in each class. So I, in, in situations like that, I try not to be as critical. But when you're judging a class that has 15 or 20 exa extracted honey entries, you have to be very critical so that the cream rises to the top and the other people that have room to improve, they can identify what areas need improvement. The other thing I try to do is write um, key points on the judging sheet that would help the beekeeper improve in those various areas. 
So let's talk about it. That's a question that I have about feedback. How do you handle feedback if you're a honey judge? Do you physically do it? Does the What do you tell the people running the show when they're handing back entries? Do you make yourself available? What would your guidance be for those who are gonna be honey judges in the future? Well, you have to be able to stand on your decision, okay? Am I human? Do I make mistakes? Of course I did. Last year we had an issue where the person that was adding up the, the scores added incorrectly. And you know what? That, that bumped a person from third place up to second place or something along those lines. Those kind of things do happen. I try to have the people here double check the, 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 the addition to make sure it's correct. Um, and um, obviously once the show is over, you know, the show is one person's opinion on one particular day. Something could happen to those samples after I'm done touching them. Hopefully nothing happened to them before I got to look at them. Okay, But those kind of issues do come up, Kevin. Um, I try to make myself as available as possible. I've had people contact me by email, unable to read my comments. I do know that one of my weaknesses is very poor penmanship. Yeah. So especially when you're trying to move things along, sometimes people can't always read my notes. I'm more than happy to try to help them decipher them if need be. And I'll put a plug in, we shot a video not too long ago where you gave the tips of the trade, right? How to do it and so many good uh, advice um, and, and tips and tricks on that video that uh, anybody who wants to get judged and wants to do better, they got the insider's view of that. And Kevin, I will tell you this, that the reason I did that is because um, I continually see the same mistakes year after year after year after year. And my goal is for the skill sets of beekeepers to, to get better, not to stay in mediocrity. Yeah. Tim, talk about the rules now. We're at the Hunterdon County Fair. Hunterdon and Warren County, we have the same rules for our district. Are the rules standardized across the United States? And if not, how do you come up with a fair set of rules or where should you look? Well, whatever show a person will be entering, um, you want to get a copy of the rules ahead of time. For example, uh, the, the show chairman told me somebody brought, I think, a sample today in plastic containers. Plastic containers are no good. The polariscope won't work through plastic. So uh, the, the extracted honey has to be in um, a queen line or a gamber one pound jar. The other thing is honey will look different the larger, the greater the, the thickness. So if you had a mason jar that was round with oblong, you know, with all kinds of designs on it versus a one pound jar, um, the honey's gonna look a different color going through a greater thickness of honey. Yeah. So it's very difficult to, to, to be able to properly judge something that, where you're not comparing apples to apples. So does the National Honey Board have a set of rules or would... No, the rules are, are kind of depending upon the show. Okay. For example, EAS rules may be slightly different than New Jersey Beekeepers Association rules. Okay, Most of the county fairs in New Jersey um, are adopting the rules that, um, that a couple of the chapters have worked on. For instance, it used to be flavor was just 20 points. We broke flavor down into flavor and aroma because I was noticing some samples, when I opened the jar, they smelled like soap. And that's not appealing to a consumer. Yeah. So now we've broke that into 10 points for flavor, 10 points for aroma. So we've made some modifications to the county uh, honey shows in New Jersey based on things that we've observed and to make it easier for the judge to stay consistent. It's important for the judge to be consistent yeah. and the rules can actually help that happen. The Hunterdon County and the Warren County Fair associations post the rules to the public prior to the events and if you ever wanted to see our rules you could just go find those websites. They're there all year long actually. Well, here's another example, Kevin. I'm going to be judging the North Carolina State Fair this year, and the, f the, the show chairman is, has sent me a copy of their fair regulations so that when I'm judging there, I mean, I'm, I'm not judging the whole show. I'm only judging certain elements of it, but I need to make sure that I know what their rules are so that I judge fairly. Okay. 
Can you talk a little bit about uh, the, the different things that people typically do wrong? Huge, huge problem. Um, lint in the honey. People strain honey through cheesecloth. People um, wash and dry the jar with a dish towel. That leaves a residue of lint all through the inside of the jar. It's a huge problem. And um, that's one thing. Lack of uniformity of fill. Uh, beekeepers are not consistent, most of them, in their fills. They either fill too low or too high, but they don't fill to the top of the glass ring on that extracted jar. I, I, I see that all the time. Yeah. Um, the other thing is sticky jars, smudges and, and, and not properly cleaning the outside of the jar. Um, there's nothing more unappealing for a housewife or for a consumer than to pick up a jar of honey and have sticky fingers after they did it. Yeah. You, you talked about taste and aroma a moment ago. That's up to the judge, right? As to the, are you judging taste in the context of not whether it tastes good, although of course you're going to enjoy it if it tastes good, but more on is it is the honey defective, or do you literally give points for honey that just tastes amazing to you for some reason? Some judges do that. Some shows have a black box category that the only criteria is the taste. When I judge a show like this, Kevin, I am judging it to. The, the taste to make sure that it wasn't um, defective in some way. It could have been fermented. It could have had too low a moisture or too, I mean, too high a moisture so it fermented. It could have been burned as it was heated, if it was heated too high. It could have been um, um, put into a container that had some other type of a food residue and, and picked up that flavor. For example, a pickle jar or something along those lines. So as long as it is a true honey flavor, I give them full points when it comes to, to flavor. So, you know, we haven't talked about this. It's funny to end on this note, but how many shows do you do a year? And how long have you been doing this? And how did you get into it? And how does somebody, today, Alice was working with you as a protege. Uh, how does that work? Well, I do on, on average, let me see, one, two, three, maybe four shows a year, mostly county fairs in New Jersey. Um, I started judging honey back in 1989. Jack Mathinius was my mentor in that area. And um, I've kind of been judging it off and on ever since. One of the jobs as a state apiarist is to judge the honey shows. Um, what I'm hoping to do is to develop a training class where people could come and people could um, um, learn how to judge honey and that there'd be a group of people that might be able to be available to judge honey in the instances when I'm not available. Um, and uh, I think that a person that likes to show honey and beehive products uh, would benefit from that class as well because they will know what judges are looking for. So today we only judged a couple classes. We did a piece of honey. Uh, we did some honey jars. and But other contests have photos and meat and other things like that. Can you give any guidance on judging those type of products that we didn't get to see in this video? Um, sure. Um, there's, a, there's a whole set of rules and a judging criteria for the cosmetics, the lip balms, the hand lotions, the soaps. Um, and you know, I mean, I can't give you, you know, how many points for everything, but that's really out there. I don't prefer to, 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 um, to judge cosmetics because I'm not a person that uses a lot of that stuff. Yeah. Um, honey and things like that, I, I know that very, very well. Um, I don't know if that answers your question or not. Yeah, you know, I guess it's a hard question to ask because unless you have the product in front of you, how do you tell how you judge it? Correct. You, let's talk just, we'll end on your scoring sheet. Your personal scoring sheet, a sheet that you got from somewhere, how does one develop uh, what the criteria should be? Well, the scoring sheet comes from the fair. So the, 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 the show chairman has scoring sheets and that person provides them to the judge once the judge is on site. We noticed today, I'm going to ask you one more thought that came to my mind, no labels. Correct. But there are some that have label contests also. They give you blank jars and then jars with labels and you'll judge the artwork and whatever. Uh, um, 
Any other anomalies in judging that people might want to know about? The well, there's the black box, which is a jar that is blacked out. It might be covered in tin foil, so the, 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 the judge can't even see what it looks like. All they can do is taste it and judge it based on taste. That's kind of a, a unique thing, but it's a thing we we get a lot more participation in because, as you said at the beginning of this segment, um, people in this society or generation don't want to be judged for anything. Yeah. And um, you know, what is going to school? It's a judgment. Do you know the material or don't you know the material? This this is not something we should fear. It's something we should look as a tool to increase and hone our skills. Yeah. And black box, uh, you know, you don't have to fuss over. You just drop your jar off and see how you make out. It could be overfilled, underfilled. Yeah. Uh, it could be anything. So, Tim, I appreciate you taking the time today to show us through all this. Uh, great, great job, and I hope others find this really useful. Thanks. Sure. Kevin's my pleasure, and I appreciate you uh, telling the story through it. So this is the case that I take with me with all my judging stuff all kept in one place. It's well padded and everything is nicely protected. What I'm going to do is open it up and show you kind of how things are stored in here and some of the items I take. You need paper towels to be able to clean your refractometer. Paper towels. This is my handheld refractometer. Okay, very important. It's kept in a padded case and ready to go. I always put it away clean so it's ready for the next show. Toothpicks are necessary for tasting and putting a drop of honey on the refractometer. Little cups for putting water in for cleaning the refractometer or for tasting mead. If you have mead in your show, you're going to need some small cups. This is a black garbage bag that I use if there's a lot of glare in a building to when I'm using the polariscope to block the glare. Here's my jacks. A uh, color grader used to determine which entries go in which classes. Here is the polariscope, which is homemade. You can find plans for these online. American Bee Journal did a great story. Actually, Wyatt Magnum did a great story on. Uh, in, in their magazine on how to make a polariscope. Easily found online or in a back issue of American Bee Journal. I bring an extra light bulb for the polariscope in case the bulb in there gets busted. This is a spare bulb. I bring a LED flashlight for examining the samples for dirt and foam and things like that. I bring a scale that weighs in pounds because in ounces because some samples excuse me require a weight. For example, some of the one pound blocks of beeswax. We keep a bottle opener for wine. Okay, this is one that uh, is very um, got good leverage. Okay, wine opener. Um, I keep one of these little adapters in case I have to plug into a light socket to get juice. I should probably keep an extension cord, but I make the show provide the extension cord. And then a, a, an assortment of pens and pencils, just so I have them handy uh, in order to record the scores. And then this is just an example of a queen line jar I don't recall why I put it in there, but I left it in there. And I'm sorry, a gamber jar. And the other thing that I will say to you guys is um, 
when you're judging, make sure you keep your all your as much of your gear in the box as possible with the lid down. Last year I had a bottle of mead explode on me, and of course my kit was open. So the mead evacuated, hit the top of the tent, and rained down all over my judging gear and me at the same time. So uh, I always make sure I keep this lid shut even what during the judging process. And that's the gear that I bring uh, to do uh, honey judging.